हेलो वेलकम यू आर लिसनिंग टू डॉक्टर सुषमा सिंह टुडे इन यूनिट फाइव ब्राह्मणिकल पर्सपेक्टिव ऑन कास्ट वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अवर लेक्चर विथ टॉपिक द आइडियोलॉजी ऑफ प्योरिटी एंड इम्प्योरिटी द आइडियोलॉजी ऑफ प्योरिटी पॉल्यूशन रेगुलेट्स रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन डिफरेंट कास्ट सिग्निफिकेंटली इट ऑल्सो प्रोवाइड्स अ बेसिस ऑफ हायर की ऑफ कास्ट thus the more pure a caste is the higher is its place in the social hierarchy the sanskrit word for purity is sadhana it is derived from the root sud meaning pure the cognate of sud is sucha meaning cleanliness the hindu script scriptures lay down several means of for attaining purity spiritual purity comes from studying the veda and other sacred texts meditating on a deity underlying pilgrimage repeating the names of god practicing continence a certain jism tapas non violence ahimsa and avoiding food such as onion garlic non vegetarian food that raise anger lust and passion when purity is lost or contaminated because of for example infringement of some critical caste rules as of a brahman who touches the untouchable by accident or because of birth or death in the family or any other reason purification through performance of specific rituals is necessary do mount uh, situates the contrast between the brahmans and untouchables in the opposition between the purity and impurity for him the position of pure and impure lies at the very root of hierarchy to the extent that it merges with the opposition of superior and inferior he suggests that specialization in the impure task in the practice or in theory leads to the attribution of permanent impurity to certain categories of people such as the untouchables the untouchables regularly perform unclean tasks such as sweeping washing dirty lining disposing dead animals and human bodies making shoes one example is that of the washerman who in most part of the country clean the soiled linen at the time of birth and menstruation the other example is that of the cobblers who have to use leather for making or repairing footwear since these are the traditional task of the untouchables they remain perpetually impure this is permanent impurity the impurity is contagious in the sense that it gets transmitted to those who touch or are touched by them the defilement of the corrected after performing a prescribed set of rituals on the other hand manu has identified bodily secretions such as excrement semen saliva and as impure and their presence in the body is making a person impure in addition some events such as birth death menstruations are considered to harbor a danger which leads to a temporary secretion of the affected persons to prohibitions against contact etc a person's closest kin often becomes impure and therefore untouchable for a specific period of time touching a menstruating woman or one who is observing taboos after child birth or a man who has returned from the cremation ground after lighting a funeral pyre are in part temporary impurities water is a purificatory agent bath in running water better still in scarce water as of the gangas is particularly efficacious in cleaning impurity 
in order that brahmins retain their purity the untouchables and people of lower caste are believed to absorb the temporary impurity of the brahmans by cleaning their premises and their soiled clothes and performing tasks that are treated as unclean and impure by them and in the process become impure themselves in doing so they ensure that brahmins remain in a state to perform rituals and act as intermediaries between god and people in a broader sense one of the factors identifying the purity of the caste is whether or not a brahman accept drinking water from the hands of its members surely there are local variations hutton cited the examples of brahman in north india who take water poured into their own drinking vessel by men of shudra caste who are regarded as relatively clean bhai carpenter nai barber barbuja green peter kahar fisherman well sinker and grower of water brahmins in south india are extremely particular in this regard like water exchange of food and dining between the caste is prone with several regulations the glance or shadow of the untouchable on the cooking pot of a brahman is enough to make one throw away its contents interestingly food cooked in water as by boiling known as the kachcha khana is subjected to more restrictions than pakka khana or food cooked in ghee or clarified butter just as there are restriction on water and food those on smoking are observed too at this juncture it may be mentioned that the material of which the cooking utensil is made is of much importance hutton records that the higher caste people do not use earthenware because it cannot be completely clean furthermore pollution can be contracted through body le contact to austin explains that basically there are two types of pollution and individual may be subjected to intransitive pollution and transitive pollution the intransitive pollution is one which is incurred when a birth or death occurs in the kin group of an individual on such occasion defilement is said to be spread throughout the kin group importantly kinship assumes importance here near relatives stay impure for a longer time than distant one what is interesting to note is the belief that the extent of intensive pollution is proportionate to the level at which the varna is located this means that higher the rank lesser is the pollution thus the brahmins get less intensely polluted than the kshatriya vaishya or shudra similarly kshatriya gets more polluted than brahman but less polluted than the vaishya or shudra transitive pollution on the other hand is incurred by way of coming in contact with the polluted material it is of two kind external pollution pollution and internal pollution external pollution is that which is required by touch or contact with polluted material it can be removed by cleaning of polluted person or polluted object a spoon touched by untouchable for example becomes polluted this pollution can be removed by washing it thoroughly similarly a person who becomes polluted when an untouchable touches him her has to take a bath in order to remove the pollution and regain his or her purity internal pollution is that which is required when a person consumes polluted food step polluted water or any other substance which gets absorbed in the body the criteria of touch or contact as means of contracting pollution is not as simple as it seems to be 
the pertinent question here is why a washerman is treated as impure and polluted when he goes to the house of a high caste man on the occasion of marriage but not treated so when he comes to the collect dirty clothes or the deliver clean ones one of the possible explanation explanation is that he does not pollute the house when he comes to collect dirty clothes or deliver clothes because at that time he is an agent of purification on the other occasion as that of marriage he is not a agent of purification but a man belonging to a untouchable caste so he is treated as impure if an untouchable pollutes an earthen pot of a person belonging to a higher caste it has to be replaced if the same person pollutes a bronze pot it may be washed scrupulously and need not be replaced Stevenson suggests that since the earthen pot is porous, it is difficult to purify it by washing. Moreover, it comes cheap, so may be replaced easily. The bronze pot, on the other hand, can be washed rigorously, is more expensive, so cannot be replaced easily. The people of impure caste are said to pollute the premises of the temple by their sheer presence. It is for this reason that they were forbidden to enter the temples and residential area of the upper caste people. Now let us move to the next point that is dietary and martial customs. According to Kolenda, one of the basic meaning of determining the place of a caste group in the ritual rank is its diet and martial custom. It has been found that vegetarianism characterized purer caste. A Brahman is pure because he or she is a strict vegetarian. This does not in any way mean that there are pure caste comprising those that are vegetarian and impure caste comprising those that are non-vegetarian. It may be noted that Kolenda ascription of vegetarianism to Brahmins does not apply universally. For there are fish and meat eating Brahmins in Bengal, Kashmir and in other parts of the country. Stevenson identifies the dietary and immartial customs as indicative of the ritual status of caste. There are degrees of impurity based on the kind of non-vegetarian food consumed by the people of different castes. It is especially defiling to eat pork or beef. He mentions that it is worse to eat beef followed by pork, mutton, chicken and eggs. So castes that eat pork are lower than those who eat mutton and castes that eat mutton are lower than those who eat chicken. Vegetarian castes are more pure. The next is hierarchy that are castes that eat mutton, chicken, egg followed by untouchables who eat all these in addition to pork, sometimes beef. So far as martial customs are concerned, higher castes are associated with the practice of monogamy. This is particularly stringent for women. Divorce and remarriage, particularly widow remarriage, is not allowed. Men may, however, marry more than one. Middle and lower caste are permissive of widow remarriage. This is, however, not preferred because it lowers the rank of a caste. Here we want to close this lecture. Thanks for listening.